Welcome back. We're taking a look at the Math 033 Yummy Graphs project, and we're in step two. We've started up Excel. We've named our tabs, photos and data and graphs. We've got our photos in there and our data and graphs. And last time I left off saying I was going to type in my uh, two tables. And you can see that I've completed one table. Uh, well, at least I've filled in the frequency column. And then the other table I've started, but I wanted to show you some formatting tricks. So over here, you'll notice that the columns are nice and broad. I can do the same thing for this table by saying it's these three columns. And then by selecting all three of them at the same time, I can stretch out the columns like this and all three of them will have uh, the same amount of space. So I'm going to do that with the last column and make it big enough for the relative frequency to fit all on one line. And you'll notice I um, added information above for package one and package two. It just makes it easier to kind of tell them apart. The other thing that I did over here was add lines, uh, make it look more like a table. And so I can do the same thing here by highlighting the cells that I want to turn into a table and then go up here and you'll notice there's a little border uh, button. If you hit borders, you can go down here and say, uh, make all the borders show up. The borders aren't necessary, but it's a nice visual aid to be able to see what's going on. And so now at this point, you can see we've got all the colors matched up with frequency. And another uh, helpful tip was I left my uh, colors in the same order in both the tables. That makes it a little bit easier to kind of move around. So I have uh, my now my frequency column, which means there were four brown, five orange, five blue, and so forth. And so if I wanted to know how many total candies were in package number one, I'd have to count up all of these frequency values. Now, if you're if you're used to Excel, if you've seen this before, then you're probably not going to be surprised. But if you've never used Excel before, take a look down here in this area of the screen. And as I highlight all these cells, watch what's happening to the count and to the sum. You'll notice the count means I've taken six rows, six particular cells, and the sum is literally the sum of all of those cells together. Now, that's really handy because I can see a quick addition of all those values right away. And that means there were 27 candies in my first package. And by the same token, there were 88 candies in my second package. But I can do one better and use that trick of uh, referring to the particular cells to come up with a total. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to program Excel down here in this, this cell right beneath the frequency column here. I'm going to say equals, and this is where we have to do a little bit of programming. We're going to say equals the sum, S-U-M, parentheses. And then you'll notice underneath it says number one all the way through and, and kind of add your list. And so all I'm going to do without clicking on anything, um, I just typed in that open parentheses. Now I'm going to move my, uh, my mouse up here and then I'm going to click and drag. So push down on the button and drag down and you should see it highlight all the cells that I wanted to add. Notice what, and then when I let go, notice what it says inside the formula. It says, find the sum of all the numbers from B3, which is this cell right here, all the way to B8, which is this cell right here. So this, and to close this out, I'm just going to type in a close parentheses so that Excel knows that's my full sum right there. And if I hit enter, it tells me exactly what I knew the total was which is 27. So I can do the same thing over here for my second package just by again typing equals. So put your put your cursor or put your mouse on that, click on that particular cell and then type in equals sum open parentheses and then we're going to tell it what numbers. So I want you to add all these numbers right here. Remember that's a click, single click, hold it and drag down to the bottom of the list and then close the parentheses. When I hit enter, I get the total. And so that's really handy for being able to add up a, a column of numbers. And remember the other, 
excuse me, the other nice thing here is that if I made a mistake and I said, oh, I actually had six orange, if I change that value inside this particular cell right here, if I change that to a six, notice that my total readjusts. And so the, 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 the magic of the Excel spreadsheet or spreadsheets in general is that you can program them to do mathematics and then change some of the inputs. You can change around some of these values and all of that programming stays in place. So right next to it, we have the relative frequency column, which if you remember from class is really just saying what proportion of the data are in belong to that particular uh, row, or in this case, color. So we know that there are four brown M&Ms in my first package out of 27. And so in order to do this, you could just say, what is four out of 27? I could pick up a calculator and do the uh, calculation and then type in that number. But that's not what we want to do here. We want to use Excel to do all the calculations. As a matter of fact, in the project itself, you'll notice it says fill in the frequencies with the data and then use Excel formulas to compute the relative frequencies for each row. So what we want to do is use Excel formulas. So that means I'm going to say for this particular cell, and in my table it would be C3, I'm going to say this one equals four, that number right there, divided by 27. So if I just type 27, I get an answer. That's the relative frequency of brown M&Ms in my first package. Now the really, really cool thing about Excel is it's pretty smart. It can kind of figure out what you want to do. So notice I typed in B3 divided by 27. And if I step down here, I could, I could do the same thing for here. I could say equals this cell divide by 27. And I could do this for each cell, each individual cell, but there's a better way to do it. And it's a pretty handy thing to, to know about with Excel. Specifically, if you have Excel doing computation up here, you can have it repeat that computation as it goes down. So for example, in the, the lower right corner of the box, you'll see it, the cursor all of a sudden appears this little plus sign. When you get right in the corner, if you get that symbol and then single click, hold down the mouse button, and then drag the mouse down for the rest of the cells in the column, and then you let go, notice what Excel did. It calculated for each one of those cells, I'm going to click on it and you'll be able to see up here in the formula bar, as I kind of walk the cursor down, you can see what it's done for each one is repeat the same pattern, repeat the same calculation, but with a different um, numerator for the fraction. So remember, way up here at the top, we started with this guy, we programmed it and said B3 divided by 27. And then the next one we typed in was B4. And then I grabbed the bottom right corner and dragged it down. And Excel said, oh, I know what you mean to do. You're going to take B5 and then B6 and then B7 and then B8 and divide each one of those by 27. Now we can do the exact same thing over here, but again, we only need to do it once. Because as soon as in this particular cell, I say equals, and then there's 19 of them, that's the cell right here, F3, divided by 88. So I just type in 88 and hit enter. If I drag that down, I wind up with the relative frequency all the way down for each one of the colors in turn. Now you might be wondering, I'm going to kind of back it up here and undo that calculation. You might be wondering why I didn't, when I typed in the formula, why I didn't say F3 divided by this cell right here. And I'm going to show you what happens. If I say, if I hit enter, I get the exact same answer, right? That is the exact same answer as it was before. The problem is that if I grab the bottom right corner and I go down like this, something weird happens you'll notice that this cell right here says F4 divided by, so F4 is this cell right here, that's right, divided by F10. F10 is this cell right here. So 
Excel thought what I wanted it to do was to take this divided by this. And so the next one down here would be this divided by this, and there's nothing there. Now, there is a way to fix that. There's a kind of a, a way to get around that, and I'll show it to you real quick. If uh, in the formula, you uh, have F3 divided by the very first one that we did, F3 divided by F9. If instead of typing F3 divided by F9, you typed F3 divided by F and then dollar sign, that's shift four, dollar sign nine, and I hit enter, you won't notice any difference. But when I drag this, basically what I'm doing with the a dollar sign is saying, don't move that cell. Leave it as F9 for everything hereafter. And so when I drag this thing down, you'll notice all the calculations are correct again. And then all of them say in their formulas, F9, F9, F9. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, whether you do it like we did in package one, where it was B3 divided by 27. I actually typed in the 27 and then I dragged the formula down like this. Or you do it like this over here with the uh, the cool dollar sign trick like this, F dollar sign nine. Either way is fine. Your calculations for the frequency and relative frequency are now complete. And if I'm not mistaken, that means that we're all done with step two. So come on back for step three.